Hi, this is Aaron and Linda with Traveling Flamingo. And have you ever wanted to stay at the bottom of a ski hill, wake up, walk out, and get to the chairlift? Well, Blue, Blue Mountain Inn, near the Blue Mountain Resort, could be the hotel for you. Blue Mountain is the largest ski resort in Ontario, Canada, and we're going to tell you all about what you can expect if you stay here, coming right up. So let's start with location and transportation. The Blue Mountain Inn is located in the Blue Mountain Resort area, which is near Collingwood on Georgian Bay. If you're looking to get there, it's just about over 100 kilometers away from Toronto, which would take about two hours by car. You can take the bus from Toronto, but that's going to take you up to four hours. Or if you can get yourself to Collingwood, there are buses from Collingwood as well. But once you arrive there, walking around is definitely the best way to be exploring the resort area and the Blue Mountain Inn does offer shuttles. It also does have free parking if you're there for the day, day parking is free and if you're staying at the Blue Mountain Inn, parking is also free there. So on to theme. This is very much what you'd expect for a ski chalet. The motto here is comfort, value, and service. They've upgraded the rooms and the lobby for a modern cottage vibe. It does feel very much like what you'd expect from a ski place. The bar and sitting area in the lobby was nice, large, comfortable seats that you can relax in, and there's also a fireplace. In the rooms, having armchairs does give it a bit more of a college fe co <laughs> cottage feel. However, overall, this is very much what you'd expect from a ski chalet. I would say it's a bit dated. It does feel as though the Blue Mountain Inn specifically uh, hasn't been re revitalized in a lot of the main areas in a while. However, you do get that feeling and it does feel very much like what you'd expect from a ski chalet. In terms of dining, there are two locations in the resort that you can enjoy, Pottery Restaurants and Jozo's Bar. We think that they have a shared kitchen because they're really right next to each other. We were a little surprised that they didn't really have great views and there, there were not a lot of windows. For the Pottery Restaurant, they do take reservations, which is really nice if you're a larger group, especially because many of the restaurants in the village don't take re reservations. It was recently renovated. There's this really cool large fireplace right in the middle, and there are larger tables for groups. It's nice. They serve locally grown food. They're open for breakfast and dinner. In terms of breakfast, the price is pretty standard, decent. You can get pancakes for $12, omelets for $13. They also have smoothies for $10 and more. Dinner, they have their appetizers, for example, a pottery signature seizure salad for $12. Entrees are things like pork chop for $24, a petite filet for $30. Jazzo's Bar is a really nice, relaxing bar environment. There's lots of TVs if you're looking to be watching a game or any of the sporting events that are going on. The food is a good price, and they also do offer some live entertainment. The menu includes things like poutine for $10, power salad for $13, chicken wings for $17, and more. So definitely more of a pub vibe there. As Linda said, we ate at the Pottery Restaurant. What we got there was the Saganaki cheese, which was $13, and we always love the Saganaki cheese. They had a weekday dinner feature, which was $25, and this was supposed to be a halibut or a whitefish. However, it wound up being salmon, so we're not exactly sure what happened there. But Linda will talk about the Brussels sprouts. They were very good. I also had the rib steak, which was $30, with fries. So this is kind of a steak fritz. Aaron, I love that you called it Saganaki cheese instead of just Saganaki, but I guess that is what the menu says. Anyway, it, the Saganaki was nice. They did not, you know, set it on fire at the table, which they usually do, but it was still really nice. And as Aaron said, I had the feature, which was supposed to be halibut or something, and that was definitely salmon, but it was very nice. And the vegetables were so good. I wish I could have got more of those Brussels sprouts. I guess that's the locally grown deliciousness, but it was very nice. In terms of entertainment and amenities, clearly this is on a ski hill, so you definitely have skiing. There's also indoor and outdoor swimming pools, outdoor and indoor hot tubs, saunas, and a gym. However, we were there during COVID-19, and the swimming pool had a book uh, in advance, sort of a re reservation system, uh, and the hot tubs were closed along with the gym and the sauna. They do have complimentary Wi-Fi, and you can uh, choose to pay more for premium Wi-Fi, which will give you better speeds. There's seasonal access to the Blue Mountain private beach, 
that's about 10 minutes away. So you do have to commute there. It's not directly on property. There's 13,000 square feet of conference space and meeting rooms. And it, the, you know, there's a bunch of different options for your business center. So if you require projectors and all that stuff, they have it there on site. It's a five minute walk to the Blue Mountain Village and all the activities that they have there. So it's pretty close to Blue Mountain Village and you can go there for additional restaurants and so forth and take advantage of everything they have on site at Blue Mountain Village. So we wanted to go over some of the common or frequently asked questions, one of which is, is the Blue Mountain Inn dog friendly? And yes, they are a dog friendly hotel. You can bring your four legged family member along with you, but they do limit it to one dog per room. How far is the Blue Mountain Inn from the village? So it is about 0.5 kilometers. Uh, so it's right near, that's 0.5 kilometers to get to the Ridge Runner coaster, which is the edge of the village. As Aaron said, it's about a five minute walk, so it's pretty close. And what can you do if you don't ski? So if you're there and it's not ski season, or if you're somebody who's not as interested in being on the hills, there's a high ropes coast, a high ropes course, a roller coaster, a mini potting, shopping, spas. So there is a lot of other stuff to do and enjoy in the area. We do also have several other videos about Blue Mountain. We have the Weston Trillium Inn, which is another resort that you can stay at on property. And we also have a bit of a review on what's in the Blue Mountain Village. So if you're interested in those, I'm sure they'll be popping up just in front of you here. And we encourage you to watch those. Some of the things that we liked about this resort was the location. It is fairly well situated by the ski hills. If you're interested in skiing, and you want to just go on on the hills, then this is a great resort for you. From a price perspective, it's probably the cheapest or most economical option when it comes to resorts within Blue Mountain Village. And the rooms were a very good size and they were fairly modern. Uh, I did have sort of a Holiday Inn slash sort of discount vibe when it, you know, when you when you go there, it sort of feels a bit like that. However, for the price and the location, you really can't beat it. And if you're somebody who's price sensitive and you really want to ski, if you're somebody who's in university or in high school and you want to go with a bunch of friends and you're just really interested in skiing, this is a great place because you can walk right to the Blue Mountain Village and you can you know, take advantage of everything that they've got there and you've got great lodging options for a good price. So I am one of those people who's price sensitive, even though I'm not in college or university anymore. And I have to say, if you plan on spending a lot of time in the village or on the hills or out of the room, like I don't need this really great luxurious room with all the amenities. And this one definitely does what it needs to do. It's a great size um, with a good location. Now, a couple things that we didn't like is the rooms are dark. So, you know, you're not coming into these more modern rooms, but if you're not spending a lot of time in there... Uh, just something we didn't love about it. Overall, everything was okay. Nothing was great, but it comes with a really good price. So, you know, don't be expecting anything super fancy, but just appreciate what you paid for it. As someone who's a little less price sensitive, uh, I liked the Westin, which we, again, have a review of if you're interested in. Uh, and they also do have locations inside the village. So if you want to stay in the village, then that is also an option. And we'll be doing reviews of those in the future. If you do have mobility issues or if you have trouble getting around, then you do actually have to walk here. So I would suggest that this may not be the option for you. There are other resorts on the Blue Mountain Village that you might like. This may not be our favorite resort, but for the price and the location, it's actually a really good value. So if you're somebody who is looking to go to Blue Mountain, but you don't want to spend too much money, this is definitely a resort option for you. If you spend all day outside exploring, skiing, shopping, and doing so many other things that they have at Blue Mountain, and you just come back to sleep, then again, this is another place that will be very good for you. They do have pools, they have a lot of amenities, but it's not the sort of highest end. But overall, we did enjoy our stay. The rooms were clean, the staff was friendly, and they do have a bunch of different options for you to be able to swim and, you know, use hot tubs, et cetera, et cetera. And it is right at the foot of the mountain. So there are a lot of specific benefits here, and I can see why it's a very popular resort. So let us know in the comments below, have you stayed at the Blue Mountain Inn? Do you have a favorite resort or hotel or place to stay in the area? Have you done any of the amenities there or in the village? Do you have a favorite one? 
let us know in the comments below. We love chatting back and forth with you guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video. Please feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. It really does mean a lot to us. Thanks again for watching and happy travels.